Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to London Dairy Presbyterian Church Online Sunday Service. What a privilege and a blessing it is to worship the Lord our God with you today. Let's listen to today's announcements. If there is no rain or storm this afternoon, which is not forecasted, we will have the Bible study at 1 p.m. in our parking lot, followed by our social gathering at 2 p.m. at the same in the same place. Just bring a Bible, a mask, your own water if you would like, and a chair. If you want, you can bring a hat in case you would like to get some sun. But being with each other has been so healing. And so important the way we, we can see each other. We keep a distance, though. We have to keep more than six feet away because we want all of us to be safe. Beloved, my second ordination exam will be at the end of September. It will be exegesis of the book of John the fourth gospel. It requires my knowledge of Greek, which I studied in my MDiv. So it will take a month for, for me to study for this difficult exam, and I will do my best. I'm taking my two weeks of study in study leave and two weeks of vacation all at once for that purpose. Please pray for me. Once again, our wonderful sister and friend, Olga Tynes, whom we love so much, has graciously agreed to bring the Word of God to you for the next three Sundays. And the Presbytery will have a full service on the first Sunday of October with communion. If you have any emergency, please call or email Linda Harvey, and she will contact Sarah Singleton, Pastor Sarah Singleton, who also graciously accepted to provide us with coverage in case of emergency. Now, I would like to thank you for your faithfulness in submitting your tithings and offerings through mail or through our parking lot mailbox. For brothers and sisters who are far away, we now have PayPal. All you have to do is go to our website, lpcnh.net, click on contributions via PayPal, and make a donation. It is that simple, and it will help us a lot. Thank you for your efforts to keep our 300-year-old church alive. Let us thank and dedicate our offerings to God. Almighty God, in thanksgiving for what you have freely and generously given us, we bring our gifts to you. We pray that they would be used to your glory and to alleviate the needs of others. Help us to always give more of our time and our resources freely and joyfully. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let us worship the Lord our God now. Please listen to the word of God in Philippians 4, verses 1 to 9. I'll give you some time to look for it in your Bible. Philippians 4, 
verses 1 to 9. Starting with verse 1. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the, God, of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> in order to study for my exam, I needed to find a place to stay away in retreat. So the first place I found wasn't available anymore. Then I found another place by a beach. Then Roberto and I went to check the place out and we saw that that place wasn't safe for me to stay. Friends, let me confess, it was frustrating, disappointing. It, that made me frown. Wouldn't you frown? Two days later, I read one of Aaron's, Aaron Brace's post, our, our brother Aaron from church. He posted on Facebook something that was a divine inspiration to me. He wrote, regardless of how bad this week gets, need to remind myself that a, a year ago, I was in a Home Depot in Atlanta, loading up gas and gas cans to get ready for a Category 5 hurricane. Luckily, the storm took a last minute right hand turn, but I ended up spending Labor Day weekend in a hotel by myself. Could always be worse, he says. Positive side effect of COVID is that I've been able to stop traveling for work. That's it, Ellen. Counting the blessings brings gratitude to your heart and produces a positive attitude. Thank you, Erin, for your testimony. It helped me, and it will help many. God bless you. Let us pray. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. As we gather online today, O oh God, we rejoice for the opportunity to sing your praises. Lord, we ask that in our worship we may be inspired, in our prayers we may be encouraged, and that in our silence we may hear your voice, the still, small voice that spoke to the prophet of old. Give us now your guidance and directions so that in all things we may know you better and serve you more faithfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Sorry. The sisters, Iwodia and Sentai, 
the sisters from church, the church in Philippi. They were not being of the same mind. And that bothered Paul so much because he knew that they, would, they were good servants of the Lord. They served with him. But, you know, that happens everywhere, even today. Because people were raised in different homes, in different states, different cultures, etc. But our faith is a culture that requires us to be grateful for the grace bestowed on us and also to rejoice as one. We at LPC are good servants of the Lord too. And one area in which the Ewodias and Sintites within us seem not to be on the same mind and rather confused and in disagreement right now is the return to the congregation in person in the sanctuary, which we all miss terribly. So some think that we should do it right now, others we should wait. But Paul has a problem solving guidance right after that text, when he gets to verse 4 and 6, and says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, Rejoice! Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let me repeat, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. When I was about to lose my peace over my problem of finding that place, God spoke to me in my devotional about gratitude. My devotional was with Billy Graham, and Billy Graham cited a story about Matthew Henry when he was mugged, and he wrote in his diary the following, and I quote, Let me be thankful first because he never robbed me before. Second, because although he took my purse, he did not take my life. Third, because although he took all that I possessed, it was not much. And fourth, because it was, it was I that was robbed, not I who robbed. Well, I was embarrassed, of course, because I should know better to be thankful. After all, I have been frog people, haven't I? For those of you who don't know this, over here we spell frog, F-R-O-G. And you can repeat at home, F-R-O-G. Fully relying on God. There are times when God pushes me to live where I preach. And this was one of these times. I was about to preach on Philippians 4, and obviously I needed to revisit surrendering to God instead of being anxious. But above all, I needed to do this with a grateful heart for all that God had already given to me. So I finally understood the message, and I surrendered. Plus, if like Matthew Henry, I would count my blessings, I would, I would found out, I would have found out that God was protecting me, guiding me, and beside having already provided all that I need to successful prepare for the upcoming exam. I have all, really, I have a a house, two houses that I can be alone and study, and I have health, I have my brain working, I have your support. I could go over and over counting the blessings. Now, brothers and sisters, we are an amazing church. That's right. You heard it. We 
are the church. Therefore, our church is not closed. And I hope you know that the building is closed, not us. We have one another, and we better count the blessings and be grateful. Grateful that so far all of us are safe and healthy in times of this contagious virus. We should be grateful for sisterhood and brotherhood that forms this body, the church. Grateful for the support of each other. Grateful for the love of Jesus that is not, not contained within the walls of a building. So once we start having a positive attitude like Aaron shared with his post, we will certainly be able to be of the same mind in the Lord as Paul asks us. Let me ask you, beloved, is there any problem disrupting the peace in your heart? Think about it. What is the problem that is... Uh, that is making you frown. Is there anything? Remember to take it to God in prayer. By thanksgiving. Being grateful. Be, being, begin to give all thanks to God for what you have instead of what you don't, do not have. So begin by giving thanks for all you have instead of what you don't have. Once you present your anxieties to God with thanksgiving, you will experience His peace. It's not just any peace. It's the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Verse 7. In my case, only after finding that place of peace in my heart, I was able to realize that if all the problems of the world were like my problem, huh? However, a problem is always a problem in our hearts. And it doesn't matter the size or character of the problem. If it is a problem, it either hurts or brings us anxiety. And we'll only experience the peace that transcends all understanding if we surrender to God our anxieties and the problem as a whole with thanksgiving. He ought to surrender it all with thanksgiving. So the cherry on the top of the Sunday is having a grateful heart. When we count the blessings, or the reasons for us to be grateful or thankful for, the anxiety level goes down, and many times the problem gets to be no longer a problem. That is the meaning of bringing all to God in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So here's the challenge for us this week. To surrender to God our problems, for He cares and He is in charge of our lives. To be still and know that the Lord is our God, Psalm 46.10. To count our reasons to be grateful and to be grateful for all that we are blessed with. Finally, to let the peace that results from the, our grateful hearts be visible and infectious, thus bringing healing not only to us, but to all around us as well. Amen? Let us do the prayers of the people in the Lord's Prayer. Oh Lord, help us to be of the same mind and to be thankful for the blessings you bestow on us. Help us to be the church and very alive, even when our wonderful building isn't safe for us to use. 
I would like to ask you, Father, to be with my church as I am away, protecting them and blessing them in all they need. And Lord, we ask you to take all of our requests into your healing, blessing, and caring hands through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Do you have your bread, crackers, wine, or juice, or water? Get ready, and let's... Have communion together. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So, come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Join us. It is Jesus who invites us to meet him here at the table. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us in your gifts of bread and wine. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry online in every place. Help us to be the body of Christ in the world. Through Christ, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. So the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is the body of Christ given for you. Let us take it all and eat. In the same way, also, he took the cup, and after supper, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let's take it all and drink. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. So strengthen us in your service that our daily living may show our gratitude through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now go forth, holding firm within the mind of Christ, knowing that you are the church. May you be, therefore, empowered by the presence of the Holy Spirit to put into practice all that has been freely given unto you, knowing that the God of peace will be with you always. And may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus this day and always. Amen. I will miss you all. Thank you. For the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Here 